One of the biggest disappointments of the year. <laughs> See, Man, what I was mean, rough is that this card was great for at least UFC for the fans up until the last two fights. The last dude, two the fights first, take this well, card. The first fight kind of sucked too. Okay, okay. Yeah. But I mean, at least Paige Van Zandt's hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think she has so many Instagram followers. It's not because she's a good fighter. Sorry to break your bubble. But yeah, she hasn't from, fought in like, the, fuck, like two years. <laughs> The first round of this fight, don't get me wrong, the first round of this fight was highly entertaining. That If if this fight was just that first round, I'd be happy with it. Jorge Masvidal looking ground the feet, being able to get off the ground really quickly, um, Usman not be able to hold him down. But rounds two to five was just Usman hugging Masvidal against the cage and stopping on his toes. Humping his leg, hitting him with his shoulder, stomping on his toes. Mm, come on man it's not the funnest you know it's not the most fun style of no. fighting to watch no. but you it's know, a hard thing because i i have to respect usman for the amount of talent he has you can't deny that he's one of the most talented fighters in the ufc right now but he's just not fun to watch and i don't yeah. mean to sound like a casual but he <clears throat> I don't. It's, it's a so it's a double sided coin, right? I mean, I don't really think we're casuals for not enjoying the way that he fights. I mean, mm-hmm. this is the entertainment business. Like yeah. you're here to put on a show, kind of. I understand it is a competition too, mm-hmm. but you're getting paid, you know, not just for how you do out there, like uh, in terms of um, like I mean, take Conor McGregor for example, take Sugar Sean, take Jorge Masvidal now, like all these guys, Ben Askren, you know, man. if you can if you can bring up your entertainment mm-hmm. value. You bring up your 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 uh, ability to earn more, you know, mm-hmm. your earning power. And uh, Kamaru Usman is, I mean, he's the champ, so he's gonna get what he wants. Mm-hmm. So that's that's kind of the reason why he's gonna he's gonna fight like this until someone forces him not to. That's why mm-hmm. I think uh, Gilbert Burns is probably the most interesting fight for him yes. right now because that's yes. the only fight that we really can say, man, it, it's any it's whoever shows up on yeah. that day. See, with that, though, especially Gilbert Burns. You, Everyone else, it's like, you know, Kamaru. It's it, it, it's one of the things that's weird about this is that Kamaru Usman dominating this fight. for Well, it's, it, it's hard to say dominated. He controlled. He decisively controlled this fight for four rounds. But he re, the man that retained his championship, it came out looking worse than a man that lost four rounds to one in a title fight. That's insane. That's, yeah, that's fist fights for you, though, sometimes in the UFC. Right. I mean, look at the Rose Namajunas fight. Mm-hmm. She won, but she looked not as good as Andrade, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's just some, that's how certain people have to fight. It's weird. And this Usman being, on, uh, the, here's my take on, Us- another take on Usman. Usman being welterweight champion is bad for Dana White. Dana White is desperately, I guarantee he's desperately looking for someone to beat Kamar Usman. If they put Burns against him what they should, because it's not like he lost a fight to lose the number one contender spot. He, he caught COVID. That, that, that's just what it is. He does, he's still number one contender. He's not going to get, he shouldn't get knocked down just because he got sick or whatever. You know, if so, whoever, whoever, Kamar Usman fights next. Dana White is going to be begging for them to knock him off. They're going to be begging for a new champion so he could actually sell and promote the welterweight division. How are you going to have <laughs> a BMF belt, this one-off, toy, uh, a lot of people call a toy fake championship? How is that going to have more prestige? And it was just made in November of, of last year. How is that title going to have more prestige than the welterweight title currently has? That's my biggest beef with this whole thing. Hey, we all know Kamaru Usman is not the baddest mf -er. Oh, hell no. That's why when he was kept on trying... So, in this fight... Yeah, Blake, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm getting a little... uh, My soapbox here real quick. This whole lead-up to this fight, Kamaru Usman is just bugging, bugging, bugging Dana White to put the BMF belt on the uh, title on the line. I know it didn't end up being on the line, but even if it was... You're not a ba- uh, the baddest mf -er if you're just going to hug and hump legs and stomp on toes. What are yeah, you doing? You're, you're the most boring. Yeah, like, you, you are the rather... you're, you're the BMF. You're the BMF. You're the most boring mother effer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good one, Blake. I'd rather watch Curtis Blades because at least he goes for a finish when he's on the ground sometimes. 
Yeah. Damn. There's a possibility. Usman, dude, I don't mean to sound like a casual, but you gotta sell yourself better than what you're doing here. It's not working. But there's my soapbox, Blake. <laughs> I loved it. Thank you. I, I got into a very passionate discussion with uh, one of my buddies um, last night to, to kind of get the juices flowing for this. And um, that's that was kind of my main point. So there you go. Okay. I loved it. Let's talk about what's next for the welterweight division. Obviously, uh, my my two cents is that we do Kamaru Usman versus Gilbert Burns because he's still number one contender, contender like I said. Mm-hmm. But that, and then because that's a great matchup. That's a really interesting matchup. Honestly, it, it's a better matchup than Hori Mazal versus Kamaru Usman. Potentially, yeah. And what I say besides that is we do, we uh, I'll go with this, Blake. We do Colby Covington, who, if he didn't get his job broken in that fifth round, I and it went the distance, he was going to be Kamar Usman. He would have been the new welterweight champion. We put him against a man that is what, on like an eight-fight winning streak, a man that deserves a lot more respect than he's currently been giving. Just been but, lurking in the shadows in the UK. Right, being stuck there, I guess, where this fight was rumored when UFC London first went under. But we do Colby Covington versus Leon Edwards for the number one contender spot. Those are two good ideas. I really like the first one. However, mm-hmm. I do have one monkey wrench to throw in your in your plans. I think I know what you're going to say, but give me that wrench. Colby does need a fight, but... I just think there's a little more juice between him and Tyron. Let's figure that out. Mm. Let's figure that out. Let's let's see if they can uh, get that going. And there's also some juice behind this fight that I'm about to mention right here. Okay, give it to and me. And if you can remember, mm-hmm. there's a certain combination meal. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, that, I think, oh, that combo meal. That, that combo may meal. Mm-hmm. have been referenced, you know, Multiple in this times. exchange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe being a three piece in soda, possibly. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Jorge Masvidal is the owner of the restaurant that served Mr. Leon Edwards this three piece and a soda. <laughs> and I think Leon Edwards would like to go get a, you know, complain to the manager and say, you know, that's kind of some dog shit. Okay. So you're turning Leon Edwards, who is a badass, into Karen. Great job, Blake. You're awful at promoting. Dude, I'm just painting. I'm feeling like I'm doing a good job painting the picture here. No, no, I was just giving you crap. That's that's a good one. That's a good lead up. Good job, dude. On that phenomenal fight. Dude, yeah, they have some beef, bro. You know, you know me. I like. I'm an emotional guy, so to say. Mm-hmm. Especially when I play Rocket League. Uh, you I know, I like. I like to sling some insults every now and then. Of course. Let's of course. let's get these guys in here that genuinely don't like each other. Because I mean, Jorge Masvidal and Usman, yeah, whatever, they didn't like each other. Okay, they had a little dust up at. You know, Super Bowl media row. Okay, Mm -hmm. dude, Tyron Woodley and Colby have been going at each other for years. Mm -hmm. Freaking Jorge Masvidal and Leon Edwards literally got into a fight (laughs) backstage. Like, let's go. It sells itself. So good. Put them them all on the same card. That would be freaking hilarious. (laughs) Just give me all Walter White Lock them all in a room together for like 10 minutes. See who who comes out alive. Give me me an all Walter White main card with Nate Diaz in, in... um, Hori Mazadal for a BMF rematch. <laughs> That's another possibility too that hasn't even been it thrown is. out. Is, is, is Jorge uh, versus Nate? Hell, Nate is having a great time. Biz, his, his he could still fight. And it's either going to be a rematch for the BMF, or he's going to do the trilogy fight with Connor. Either I way, think, I think the Connor fight should be the next for Nate. Either way, considering how everything's kind of in limbo for Connor in the lightweight division and right then now. Then we do Stephen Thompson against Hell. Let's just throw a name in there. Um, Damian Maya. Yep, let's do that. There is five fights right there. All the welterweights. Just make a main card at that on Fight Island. There you go. That's my pitch. Dude, but the that, welterweight tournament. That'd be so saucy. The welterweight Grand Prix. Honestly, I would love to see a Grand Prix in the in, in UFC. That'd be fire. Yeah. No, that would be absolutely nutty. But if you if, let's talk about the Covington and, and Tyron Woodley fight. A lot of beef behind that. And imagine. Imagine. What we hear from Covington, if he's the one that <laughs> retires Tyron Woodley. Oh, dude. Oh, my. God. Three L from going to champ to three consecutive L's. With, the, in like less with than your a last year. fight being against the man that sparks you, you the most. Oh. Yeah. Oh, man. That would just that would just be that would be like Shakespearean. I don't even know, man. That, that would, would just be, be. Is that too perfect <sighs> of a thing to happen? 
I just don't know if the MMA gods are going to allow us to have that. It, uh, it, they still need to make up for no no Khabib and Ferguson. So they still they owe us. We owe, they owe us one. The, the MMA gods are in debt to us. So let's have Colby Covington retire Tyron Woodley. Ah, oh, that would be so good. Get his ass off TMZ. Oh my gosh, that'd be phenomenal. But man, let's let's hope the Walter Way. Here we go, Blake. You and me. Uh, I mean, all respect to Sean Shelby. We don't have to take his job, but let's just work with him because we could revolutionize the UFC. Dana White, um, uh, my phone number. You you know my phone number. I already gave it to you, man. Just give me a call. I'm 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 good anytime. I know you're up at like three in the morning. I'll be up. Call me. Call me, Dana.